And welcome to the Capital Improvement uh, Plan Committee meeting of January 7th. And we're calling the meeting to order at 5.04 p.m. And the first on the agenda is we're going to remove, review uh, minutes from our previous two meetings. So the first will be a review of this December uh, 12th minutes. And we'll quickly look those over. And if people feel comfortable, whenever I'll accept the motion. Comments? Comments, when yeah. ready? Yeah. I am. I don't know if we want to add it, but at on the 68,000, we discussed, uh, Diane, if we needed the school as an emergency shelter with what we already have in place, mm -hmm. and Diana was going to look into that, yeah, I don't know if we want to put that in the minutes. Uh, or not. Frontier, the elementary school. Elementary school. Elementary, elementary yeah. school. I don't know if we want to look put that in the minutes or not. Uh, I don't <clears throat> believe it's really necessary because we will we can, but uh, we will be discussing that when we okay. meet with with uh, with Ken the representative and and Diana again. So we will we will be discussing that in more detail. So there will be follow up discussion on that. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of December 12th, as presented. I'll second. Okay, any further discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Abstain. Abstain. So we have four yes, nay zero, and one abstention. And now we'll review the minutes of the 18th, December 18th, and this was just a joint meeting of the Finance Committee, the Select Board, and the Capital Improvement Committee. There were no votes taken. Basically, it was general discussion on the items listed here. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of December 18th. Do we have a second? Stain, it wasn't here. Okay. I can second it. I was here seeing how. And everybody uh, in favor? Aye. Aye. There's two of us that were present at the time. So we're, I'm abstaining. Right. And abstain. The th other three would be abstain. Okay. So it's. <laughs> Two zero three. Yep, two yep. zero three. The other two people that were in attendance aren't here yet, so. <coughs> and now we'll move on. The chief is here tonight. Thank you for joining us. And let's start uh, with the first request of the mobile data terminals. And if you could just give us a brief overview, because a lot obviously the listeners aren't aware of what we have sitting in front of us. And just a brief overview of your request and the reason why. Sure, thank you. Thanks for the invitation and good evening. John Pachorek, the Chief of Police. One of the two requests that I did put in this year was for replacement of the mobile data terminals. They are currently six years old, so they're approaching seven now. Uh, you'll note that it is on the replacement schedule. It's been on there since we purchased them back in 2013. The mobile data terminals are actually laptop computers that sit in the cruiser. Uh, they have access to not only the World Wide Web, but they have access to all the criminal and registry of motor vehicle data. So they're, uh, they're encrypted. We do use the Panasonic Toughbooks, so they are a little expensive. But with that, as you will note on the form, you get the heated hard drives, backlit keyboard, hard drives that are actually mounted on a spring suspension system. So it's not a standard laptop. You can buy a standard laptop for $1,000, $1,500, or even a MacBook Pro for $1,800, $2,300. But in a cruiser, when you start hitting bumps and those things are mounted on hard stands, eventually the wear and tear on them, they don't last. So we go with a military-grade military computer, and I'm happy to say that we've relatively had zero issues with them in six and a half years. So now we're approaching year seven. They still work very well, and 
if they still continue to work very well, even if the money's allocated, I may have the money sit there for six to 12 months before I even order the new set. But I don't want them to start to degrade and get out of our replacement schedule and then come to you and beg at last minute or put an article on for a special town meeting. I'd rather just do it appropriately, even though they were still working extremely well. So their touch screen, like I said, their backlit keyboard. So if somebody's operating at night, they're uh, as safe as possible. And in the daylight, you'll notice, even if you do research on the Panasonic website, that uh, the, the screen themselves, the resolution and the brightness of those screens go about 1.5 times the normal computer. Because when we're sitting on an accident scene and that sun's beating in the side window and you're trying to look at the variation between shade and sun, those screens are extra bright. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a backdrop why we go with those more expensive computers. Okay. What happens with the old ones, John? Generally, we take those hard drives and we take them and shred them so they can never be used again. The computers themselves can actually be traded in okay. and sometimes we do get a credit for them, which this time we can advocate for. Mm -hmm. This price is a little bit high. The laptops themselves can run about $3,800 to $4,200 depending on what you get for options with them. It's a question of the mounting kit in the cruiser, whether we have to retrofit it as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's the wiggle room in there. And obviously, if we trade it and there's excess money, it just comes back in a free cash. Right. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, and I just have to, I apologize. I need to back up a little bit. Chief, just to sure. let you know, and we'll be telling all, all department heads this, sure. that uh, we are just simply reviewing right now. Mm -hmm. We will not be voting on these. We are going to be setting a night mm -hmm. aside down That's the fine. road, and yep. we will be voting all uh, request mm -hmm. on that one evening good we did that last year and seemed to work out quite well and the committee decided to do that i also want to make note for everybody just uh the the request here that the chief pointed out for the uh thirty five thousand mm -hmm. dollars was built into our five-year mm -hmm. uh plan and it was due for fy 21 so we are on schedule with that are there uh, any other specific questions about this request that anybody may have? How many? There's seven total. Seven total. Yep, so six going cruisers and there's always one spare. Yeah. Yep. Yep, and that spare ultimately can be operated anywhere because it has an air card on it. Mm -hmm. So if we set up a mobile command post, if there's an incident somewhere, you can run everything at your fingertips. Okay. Yep, everything's accessible to you and all those cruisers can be fully operational mm -hmm. on the road. Yep. Everybody good? Yep. Any other? Okay. Thanks, Chief. You're welcome. And now, could we move to the next one, which is a $23,000 uh, request for the police data migration? Sure. Again? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think a few of the townspeople know, maybe not everybody, about five years ago, I started uh, a million dollar computer project for the entire Franklin County, for all the police and fire departments to migrate onto one computer system and one record management system so everybody could see each other and each other's records. We could free flow data back and forth. And we finally achieved that goal about a year and a half to two years ago. Deerfield was the first community, because I spearheaded it, to come on board. So now we're dealing with the remnants of it. We're dealing with the aftermath where we had a server in our police station that's still fully functional with 21 years of data on it. Police reports that records retention laws we can't get rid of all the way through to citations. All that data needs to be migrated into the new server so we can go ahead and decommission the old servers. Because what's happening is every time they upgrade the software, software, the police software, I now have to upgrade Franklin County, which is housed in Chelsea, Massachusetts. And now I have to upgrade our still Deerfield PD one. And those servers are now approaching six or seven years old and I don't wanna replace them. So what I'd like to do is take all those old records, it's called data migration. You mm -hmm. take all those old records, thousands and thousands of police reports, a professional company comes in, and re-enters all those police reports, citations, arrest reports, images, and data all the way through to calls for service onto that machine in Chelsea, and we can go ahead and decommission everything at Deerfield PD. Now we're not maintaining servers, 
any software in here or dealing with any upgrades. So that's the goal with this request. Is the 23,000 for the people that are gonna make the migration? Yes, yeah, it's actually for a, a company to come in and take all that data and extract it and put it onto the new system. In the servers that are existing now, Chief? Yes. What becomes of those? Are they useful for the town? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, we could, uh, we could scrub them and the town could reuse them. The problem that you're dealing with, again, is they're seven years old. Yeah. Do you want to do that? I, right. I don't know. That would be an IT question. Mm -hmm. Do you want to upgrade them and see if they're still in decent shape or not? Yeah. Probably. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's probably not. That's the issue. I mean, these things have run 24 right. 7 for seven years. Technology. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like by the time you're right, and by the time, but. Yep. Just curious. And because of the stability of it, when we ordered them seven years ago, we ordered the old Windows server software on them. They've never been upgraded to the new Windows server software because we like the stability of the older software. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now, now everything's going straight to Chelsea. Chelsea, Massachusetts, yes. Right, yep. So anything moving forward is not. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Will there be an annual fee? Using there, there is. As one far of the reasons outsourcing. Well, one of the reasons that I migrated to the new system is we were paying about eleven thousand dollars a year in software maintenance fees. Mm -hmm. When we come up to a regional system, our maintenance fees drop to forty-eight hundred dollars. Okay. So there was a dramatic savings that we went ahead and reduced in that line item years ago. Good. Okay. So actually, there'll be some savings involved. Yeah, over time there is. Over time, yep. right. Yep. And little by little, every year seems like they're jumping up roughly 8%. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how long that savings is going to be right. there. No, but like, yeah, yeah, understandable. Yeah, it's technology these days. It's, right. Yep. Once I got you. Oh, yeah, I had the, the same argument every one of you know with a, a hybrid cruiser last year. Do we go to a hybrid? Do we not? Do we invest these $7,000? Yeah. What's the yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the long-term payoff? Is it going to be a value? So, to be determined. Yep. yep. Any okay. other questions? No comments. Not for me. Straightforward. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Pretty, pretty straightforward, Chief. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. I guess okay. we're good. Well, thank you. Thank Thanks you very in. much for coming in. We really yeah, appreciate my pleasure. that. Yeah. If you have any follow-up your... questions, hit me up anytime. Yeah. We'll do. Thank you. Good to see all of you. Yeah. Okay. Good seeing you. Thank you. <clears throat> <laughs> Kevin, great, on. you're early. Hello. Kevin, I do have one item here, if you don't mind. It's just, all this is a request form, uh, because we decided we want to make sure that everything was covered by a request form. Okay. So that would be simply for the uh, Eversource mower. I know it's for five years. And I know we're in the fourth year of it. Right. So just just as you've done in the past, simply requesting the twenty six thousand. So that, we have it. That gets reimbursed. Right. That <laughs> gets reimbursed. It's a wash. Right. We know that. It's in the plan, five year plan, but we just want to make sure we have it on paper so it's recorded. Sure. Well, okay. Take a nap, take a copy of last year's and change the date. Right. <laughs> and that and you don't need to do it now. You can any time and throw it in the mailbox. Yeah, so, yeah, easy, easy enough. And uh, Kevin, do you need more time? Do you, or are you no. good to go? Or I know we're a little. That's little, okay. Oh, Start yeah, asking but, questions, and I'll be here. And if oh. I can answer them, I will. And if I'm stuck, then I'm going to ask All for right. a second. <laughs> well, again, thanks. Thanks for coming in. Uh, also, just one up front, we're we're going to do this like we did last year. The committee discussed it and we voted it. As far as I don't know if we voted or not, but we discussed it and decided. The committee decided that we're going to do all the interviews, mm -hmm. review all the requests before mm -hmm. we vote any. Yep. And then we're going to pick one particular night and vote all the requests from all the departments. Very good. So just so you, so you know. Uh, 
and you have a couple of court requests so let's start off with the replacement pickup truck okay and obviously we're aware of it but uh, the listeners aren't so if you could just do a quick overview of Certainly. your request and the reason why you're requesting please Certainly. So what I'm looking for is I'm looking to replace our truck number 008, which is a 2010 F-150 with approximately 80,000 miles. Um, it's been, for the most part in the past, it's been the supervisor's um, or the superintendent's truck used for uh, all kinds of things, going to meetings, um, checking the roads, whatever. One of the advantages of having it being the two-wheel drive, it's a lower vehicle. So there's a lot of times that like, we go for like putting out whips and stuff like that. Instead of, you know, it sounds kind of stupid, but instead of climbing in and out of like one of the bigger trucks all the time, I mean, because you only go so far and you stop, you put in a whip, you go so far, stop, put in a whip, um, they utilize that, you know. Mm -hmm. So it just make it more of ease for the guys. Um, and realistically, when I really think about it, and this is going to sound kind of silly, but again, the way my brain works is I'm always looking for the deep, dark, what can possibly go wrong. If I can make an opportunity for somebody not to, quote unquote, fall out of a truck or slip out of a truck, and so be it. The way I look at it is just, I'm just trying to cover us in the long run. Mm -hmm. um, basically this 150, um, we'd like to replace it with another 150. Again, two wheel drive, so that way we can use it for the, for the fuel economy because obviously a two wheel drive works much better than four wheel drive when it comes to fuel economy. Um, going on the thought process of replacing pickup trucks every 10 years, larger dump trucks every 20 years, and equipment every 25-ish, um, this just falls into the uh, um, the rotation at this point in time. Um, we're looking at, I did a request of 35,000 and I checked again with Chuck who we went through and we did a little bit of, of research around because um, once again, we don't go strictly off a of state bid right off the bat. A lot of times what we'll do is very similar like with the 550. Okay, we thought about putting it out for a state bid, but we said, you know what, why don't we go ahead and give it a shot? So we put it out. Um, for a general uh, bid process, mm -hmm. and we save three thousand dollars. So a lot of times when somebody goes, "Oh, well, you're getting off a state bid," that doesn't necessarily mean it's always the best price. It just means right. that they've gone to the state, they've jumped through all of their hoops that they needed to jump through. So now, if I wanted to quote unquote want that F-150, I could go directly to a Ford dealer and say, "This is what I want," and I don't have to go through all that. But mm -hmm. Uh, once again, what we'll do is, is if we're uh, authorized to go ahead and do this, we'll do the same thing. You know, we'll go mm -hmm. ahead and we'll probably put it out the bid, see what we get. And the nice part about it is if we put out bids and we don't like the bids, there's nothing saying we have to take them. So arbitrarily, let's just say um, three bids come back in and state bid right now is, again, arbitrary number, 32,000. And the bids come in at 35 or 36, then we just won't take them and we'll go back to state bid. Right. So that's... That's kind of a nutshell where we're at, what I'm looking for. Okay. okay. All right. Any and, questions on that part? Uh, just so everybody knows that the 35 for the pickup truck replacement was built into the five-year plan for FY21. So no surprises there. Uh, questions, comments? Question, Kevin, mm -hmm. uh, two-wheel drive, fine yeah. year-round? Yeah. Not, not yeah. For, 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 for what it is, for what, we're, for? for what we're going to do, for what we're going to use it for, yeah, yeah. I think two-wheel drive would be fine. Um, King cab, standard cab? No, I think we're going to stick with a standard cab again. Standard um, cab, yeah. And again, just trying to, A, keep the cost down, and, and just we're really trying to focus on what we have, you know, what, what is, what, what can we utilize properly and what is fluff? And we try and obviously just stay away from the fluff because I'm a taxpayer too and I don't want to spend any more money, my money than I have to. And mm -hmm. are you going to keep the old truck or? Actually, well, we're, it's, yeah. it's kind of, we're almost kind of backlogged by one vehicle. Um, so when the vehicle that gets traded in for this one right here would actually be the 2007 F-250 that's pretty tired. The 150, for the most part, is going to be um, around, but wastewater treatment plant, they're continually calling for trucks all the time. Um, and the 150 works for them for the simple fact is, is they're just trying to get back and forth from point A to point B. They're trying to bring trash or stuff up to the transfer station. 
Um, so we're going to be utilizing that kicking around for them. So, and then once the next vehicle gets replaced, then that will be the one that we actually end up trading in. So we okay. always stay like almost like one behind for the trades. Right. So the other truck you're not trading, you're... The 150, correctly, correct. Right now we are not. That will, you will still see that 150 kicking around. But you are going to trade in... Yeah. We are going to trade in a 2000... Uh, seven, seven, seven. Two, no, oh, nine, 2009 F250. And that one's not being used? That one's presently being used right now, but we're, we're going to replace that. That's going to be a replacement because, long story short, um, transmission issues, motor issues, the thing's making noise. Um, it's the tranny starting to skip. It's, it's so just not worth it. That's the one that's going out. That's it's the one that is that going place. out, and then the 150 is going to kind of. Now, that won't be taking its place for plowing or stuff like that, but we, we have uh, uh, truck 13, which is the F350 flatbed that has a V-plow on it. Um, that right there would be the next vehicle that would be utilized for snow removal. Okay, so, yeah, you so you're not leave yourself do. shorthanded. Correct. Correct. No, that's, that's, that was my question. Yeah, no, I, I definitely, I definitely try and look, like I said, I try and look at the big picture, making sure that, you know, I, I don't want to shortchange myself. Mm -hmm. uh, but again, the other side of the coin is this, you know, I want to be a hog either, so. Different so, <laughs> I'm confused. This says truck 008. 2010. Correct. On the sheet. That's right. And, I, and I've got a 2018 that's 002. So shouldn't we? It, that's, that's just the number we use. I could call it 356,000 truck number. It doesn't make a difference. That's just a number that was, that was adopted to that truck before I, I came, before I came to work for the town. But it's a two, you're replacing 2007, right? 2009. 2009. Yeah. This says F two fifty. F two fifty. That is correct. That's my confusion. I'm sorry. Well, he's just gonna, he's gonna he's gonna trade the two thousand nine F two fifty and keep the old F the old two thousand ten F one fifty F one fifty because he thinks it's in better shape than the old than the F two fifty. Because at least this one here we can continue to drive, but the O seven or excuse me the the O nine the F two fifty is. It's beat. It's definitely had its life plus. Well, I have to, I like the fact that you're got some flexibility in their mobility. But this one goes to one, but then you're employing another truck. We've got, that's a nice way to be able to work. Yeah, we're, we're, like I said, we're, tr we're trying to stay ahead of the game, mm -hmm. you know, and, and the wastewater, I think at one point in time, wastewater treatment used to have a vehicle. Right. Wastewater mm -hmm. does not have a vehicle at this point in time. So I'm not sure how that all happened again it was before 10, 10, 10 when I came along. Mm -hmm. um, so, but I was told long ago by some of the older guys that have been kicking around, and oh yeah, yeah, they used to have a truck. Right. Okay, well, where is it? <laughs> well, they, didn't they have an F-250? They had an F-250 that was, that was sort of rejuvenated that we- That was, that was one that we had that we were trying to- <coughs> body work Right, exactly, yeah, we, we took a, we took a, a bed off we took off a bed that we bought a new truck and we took off the bed, put the bed on that pickup truck and we put a aluminum flatbed on, on the new truck. On the new truck um, so that way we could reutilize the other truck. And then at one point in time, it just got to the point that um, the engine was skipping. We were having major issues with it. We couldn't figure out. Um, the one thing we didn't put into it at that point in time was a computer. You know, we did um, uh, we did the uh, injectors. We went through. We checked. You know, we checked all the plugs. So we went it, did. it worked for a few years. Yeah, yeah. It we it lived us along right. for a little while. Right. So, yeah. Kevin, yes, what sir? what is the wastewater treatment plant using now for a truck? Uh, whatever is available at that point in time. Whatever is available. Right. And usually, so, historically, I ask Keith. I says, if you can give me twenty four hours notice, that way I can make sure something's available for you. Right. Okay. So you know, and so it, and basically, it's, they're using one of the trucks from the highway. The highway Correct. So on on request. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. And this gives them the flexibility. That they're not. A, 
they all have, they all have possession of this, or are you? Are you gonna hold Correct. It? No, we'll we'll have possession of it. We'll house it. Right. Um, then that way, you but know. But it's fully available to them. But it's it, it'll be well. Nothing. More readily. <laughs> it, it'll be more readily available to them. Right. Okay. Um, it, they, they only need it though for like right, for right, a few right. hours. Right. right. Normally, right, right. historically, not, correct. Not full time. Exactly. So it's okay. not like I said. It's not a deal where they use it all the time. So as John pointed out, then yeah, you will be hanging on to the two two ten F one fifty. That is correct. And yes. trading we'll in the two thousand nine two fifty. Correct. Okay. Just so we. Yeah, Clarify that. Right. Too many numbers, John. Any other uh, questions or comments in that? Kevin, as far as these trucks go mm -hmm. in that, do we, obviously we don't have a wash station, but do they get washed? Yes. Um, basically, for the most part, we wash our stuff outside, so it's kind of dependent on weather. Weather. Um, we did contemplate at one point in time bringing trucks in and washing them inside. Mm. Pickup trucks, things like that, if we're not splashing, if, if we're not cleaning out sanders, I have no problem washing the vehicle inside. Yeah. But if we're washing out sanders and things like that, I do not want that done inside. When we were looking at different buildings originally before the highway garage was built, um, Chuck and I, we went down to Lexington and we saw their quote unquote wash bay that was built by the same people that um, built our garage and they had multiple issues there mm -hmm. with the salt. Um, they didn't think enough to put all of the steel that was in that area as stainless. Yeah. Um, and so, to be honest with you, long, it, 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 that area deteriorated in less than three years, mm -hmm. you know, and, and for the amount of money we spent there, I, I just assume yeah. go ahead and just mm -hmm. wait and, and go outside and do it. You know, we have conjured up a couple different things, you know, cause in the past, you know, the guys have kind of like laid down, they laid on a creeper or something like that and kind of washed down. So what we were able to do is we, once again, I mean, we're, we're pretty fortunate with, with our mechanic, Chuck. Um, he does a really good, great job for us along with John. So they end up making things. Mm -hmm. um, and they basically made a, a roll underneath that attaches to the pressure washer. Yeah. And so that way we're able to go ahead and clean the bottom of the trucks that way. So at least it's a little bit more than what it was. So they made one. I saw one. I was just going to say, I saw one somewhere that Ryobi makes that mm. rolls oh, yeah. under yep. the... Yep, exactly. Well, we attaches made one. to the pressure washer and rolls mm -hmm. underneath. Exactly. That's but exactly they made they one? Did. Yep, they made one. Just like um, we've been contemplating going to brine when it comes to pre-treating our roads. Well, we don't have <clears throat> any way of spraying. So we're... We weaseled around, we got ourselves a thousand gallon tank that didn't cost us anything. And we built a, I shouldn't say we, I should put it on Chuck and, and John. They built a skid so that way it's mounted to the skid. So then they're looking, they're going, all right, well, standard slide in units are around anywhere between eight and 10 grand. So then they started looking at it, and they're going, now historically you'd have a, a, a gas pony motor on the back, mm -hmm. Honda motor. Now you're talking probably 600 bucks, roughly. Now you've got the electric clutch that goes along with it. That, that way they can turn it on, turn it off from inside the cab. That right there itself is $250, which is, I thought was outrageous, <laughs> but whatever. Um, and then the only way of being able to regulate what we're putting down is to be able to go outside and raise the, um, the motor speed up and down. <clears throat> so then we're standing there in the back of the truck and Chuck goes, oh my God, why didn't I think about this before? I'm like, what? He goes, I have hydraulics right to the back of the truck. So we got rid of the motor. We got rid of the, the expensive um, gas or the uh, electric switch and went through, piped everything through the hydraulics. So now they can run the hydraulics inside just as if they were running a sander so they can increase and decrease the amount of product we're putting down on the ground. Mm -hmm. um, basically, we ended up putting, be able to put that entire thing together for less than three grand. So, Good. Good. And, and, and we also utilize that for our dirt roads now too because historically in the past, we've always utilized another company to come in and spray our dirt roads for the calcium. Well, mm -hmm. now we don't have to do that anymore because of the way that he, he handmade the rear spray bar. So all there is is there's a um, poor choice of words. There's like a, a metal clip that clips down. You pull the clip out, you pull out the old nozzle, you put it, pop in the new nozzle, clip it back down again, and we go from a spray to a pencil, and it makes all the difference in the yeah. world. So um, 
like I said, we're we're pretty fortunate with what we've got and, and as creative as we can be. You know, because right. as again, far as uh, the winter time wash and that, are you able to do that with your larger trucks? Yeah, get underneath them and yes. that. Yeah, because the underneath ones, that, those aren't quite so bad. And to be honest, one of the things I am going to be purchasing this year is um, one of those stands, uh, the, the rolling stairs. Yeah. Because um, to be honest with you, I, I went by later, it was a little while ago, and I went right out of my mind. I saw one of the guys standing on the top of the truck with the big hose. It's like, mm. oh, God. Right. Yeah. No, please, no. No more. Um, okay. So obviously you're mm -hmm. trying to address that. Yeah, correct. Yeah, as we're as we're trying to keep them as clean as possible. Right. Um, you know, it makes longevity, and not only mm -hmm. that, but I mean, it's it's just pride too. You know. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, it's 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 very difficult. Obviously, I mean, you know, we look at our own vehicles, and over years they rust out, and that. Right. So, especially with the the work that you know the highway department does, you know, it obviously pays to wash mm -hmm. as often as you can, like like the rest of us with Certainly. our own vehicles, so. Good, I'm glad there's a system. And do you ever place. have those filmed, you know, that fluid film, do you ever do those on those trucks? Oh, fluid, everything's fluid filmed. It is, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we fluid film. What we do is basically when we get ready for winter time is everything gets pressure washed down um, because we, we do have the capability of putting the trucks up on the drive-on lift, the four-post lift, the, it's a 30,000 pound lift, we'll pick up anything that the town owns. Drive the truck up on those and they completely pressure wash the underside of the entire truck. When they're done with that, they let it sit overnight, let it dry, and then they fluid film the entire truck. Okay. Um, that we were adamant about that at least twice a year. Right. So. Any other questions, comments? <clears throat> All right, very good. Let's move on to the next request here. Um, obviously, there was a uh, technically a couple requests, but it's related to uh, the mini excavator. And again, Kevin, do you want to do a quick sure. overview? And um, the reason why the request? Certainly. Um, basically what you have in front of you, you have, you have a preferred option, you've got an alternate option. Uh, the preferred option is a little bit more expensive. It's 114,000. It's a bigger unit. It will do more for us. Um, it's got a longer arm. We will be able to uh, utilize it for taking care of our storm, system, our, our storm drains, our culverts, our ditch line failures. Ditch lines are really huge for us right now. Attempting to get out there with the, with the, uh, uh, with the backhoe. backhoe. When I started doing it with a backhoe, because originally that's what everybody mm -hmm. did was with a backhoe. Mm -hmm. You know, Cocot, when Cocot was doing it for us long ago before we got a backhoe, that's what they utilized. Right. They don't use a backhoe anymore. You know, everybody's going to a mini. The simple fact is it's easier to maintain, it's, it's cheaper to maintain, it's easier to get around, and then we have 360 degree being able to work with the equipment. Um, right now, if you go ahead, hypothetically, I'm trying to dig a ditch right here, I'm trying to put a new pipe, and I'm with my, with my backhoe. Mm -hmm. Basically, I can back up and I can dig so far, but then I have to come sideways, and I have to try and, and, and attempting to dig a ditch like that, is, is like a Tyrannosaurus Rex, you know, <laughs> your, your hands are kind of like, you. bless you, pulled up. It's, it's extremely difficult to work. Um, it's not effective. Um, and, to be, and again, to be honest with you, if we were to, and this is just my thought process, is if we were to go ahead with the larger unit, which is um, the 30E, uh, excuse me, the 308E2, that would, Probably when it comes time to replace the backhoe, we probably would not replace the backhoe. Did go ahead and went to Caterpillar and asked them, hey, what do you give us for a trade? $30,000. Really? Have a nice life. Mm -hmm. There's no way we're going to let that thing go for 30 grand. There's no way. Knowing full well that the first thing they're going to do is they're going to clean it up, they're going to put it on a ship, it's going to go overseas, and they're going to get 100 grand for it. No. Would you, what would you do, do with it? What would you use the backhoe for? Well, presently we're still we're still utilizing the backhoe. Um, no, but if you get the mini excavator. Well, again, we, you'd you'd still end up you still be able to utilize it. Like right now, if we go out, we go out salting, or excuse me, we go out treating the roads. Okay, or better yet, when we go out plowing, the bucket comes off of the loader, and a plow goes on. He goes out and does his route. So when the guys come back after their route they need to reload with product. 
there's nothing to reload with. So that's what we've been reloading with is with the backhoe presently. So what we do in the future, to be honest with you, by the time that the backhoe is ready for replacement, I'm going to be long retired and somebody else can <laughs> figure it out. Um, yeah, the backhoe is not due for replacement for another <clears throat> nine, ten years. And I keep lying to myself saying five, but I really know it's seven. So, so you'll see my smiling face for at least another seven. Is there minutes. other stuff? I mean, it sounds to me like we're going to use it. If, if this happens mm -hmm. and the, you could get 35000 for the backhoe, we're... It'd be foolish it's costing money. us thirty-five thousand dollars to be able to load product with the backhoe and anything else it would do. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it to depends. me, it seems like an expensive option. I grant, granted, right. that great. Yeah, they may sell it. Okay, well, how, okay, well, how about how about this then? Let's go on the theory. Let's pretend I didn't say anything about the backhoe. That's this is what the um, what this is what what this is going to do for us. And the decision on what they're going to do with the backhoe in nine years is up to the person then, not me. Whether they replace it or not. Whether they replace it or not. Because at that point, it may be so obvious that you've got what you need. Correct. Again, lost. Well, you could, but you well, could. He's not replacing. But you don't have to trade in the backhoe. The backhoe. You could, we could sell that at retail ourselves. If, if we can get a decent price for it, certainly. But again, you know, I, 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 I will absolutely flat up refuse to take anything less than like 60 or 70 grand for it. It's, it's ridiculous. Okay, so you, you, could, ask, you could ask You that. could ask for it. Um, whether we get it or not, that's... Who knows? Who knows? But, but you, um, could, you, could definitely tr you could definitely try. You but definitely here's the thing is, 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 and I'm not sure in But you're saying that you can use the backhoe. We can, you, yeah, the, you, the can, backhoe is the still you, usable. You continue to have u use for the backhoe. Correct. Because this one right here, because the, the mini the mini is going to be more for the edge of the road work. It's going to be more for replacing our culverts, which are, which are, except for a couple, there's one up on upper road that has to be replaced next year. And I'm sorry, but I got to call in a larger excavator for that. For the simple fact is that pipe is almost 26 feet down. So there's no way I'm going to be able to get that. So there's there's going to be times that um, we'll still end up having to rent or lease a piece of equipment as a replacement of. But to go back to your question right now, yes, we 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 still would be utilizing the backhoe. You know, I guess that's a little bit of my concern, Kevin, is the duplication. And and I realize, mm -hmm. obviously, I've been around construction all my life, so I I do understand. Uh, the issue here mm -hmm. as far as backhoe and mini excavator, but uh, I, I'm just wondering as far as how much use, because obviously with backhoe you can drive to the job site mm -hmm. if close enough. Uh, with a mini, you're going to have to uh, you're gonna end up having trailer it. Right. Dump truck anyway. Yeah. So you're gonna to have to truck it anyways, right? One right. way, one way or the other, you're gonna to have to do whatever. So, uh, and I'm I'm trying to look here as far as in comparison, all you know, all these years we've done X amount with the backhoe, and Correct. we've been able to get away with the backhoe. Sure. And and I do understand that there's some other items coming down here, uh, namely the mosquito district mm -hmm. that is putting a little pressure on you that uh, the backhoe may at times not work that well compared to Correct. Uh, many. I guess though my question would be in relationship, and I, and I know we can skew this any way we want, but mm -hmm. realistically, how much work, how much time would we need to use that mini throughout the year compared to that backhoe? Well, I'm trying to figure out how I, how I can answer this with in, within my own brain here. It depends on what I have for minute for personnel. Is is really what it boils down to. Now, realistically, to be honest with you, if I had enough personnel, I would have one person in the mini. Mm -hmm. You could pretty much have them all summer long cleaning yeah. ditches. Ditches have not been touched in multiple years. <clears throat> If I had enough people, I would have a person in the over the guard row mower all year or at least all summer and into the fall. But once again, we only have seven people. 
you have to take in consideration vacations, sick time, everything else that we give them for their benefits. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of times that we're just completely shorthanded, you know. So, am I am I trying to be equipment rich and employee poor? I'm really not, but. What I'm attempting to do is so that way when we do have the time and we do have the ability, we've got the equipment to go out and do the job. Right. Um, that was so my memory from last year when we had the mini excavator discussion was that mm -hmm. you felt like you would get more output from the people that you had right. with more, so that if you sent two people out, you could actually have, you had enough in the summer call to action for both the backhoe and the mini excavator with two different people as opposed to using the backhoe to do this. Right. Because we're because actually what we're trying to do is we this past year we try to utilize uh, uh, two summer helps yeah and they did a pretty good job for us you know um, but they weren't it wasn't a deal of hand them the keys to the truck and the trailer and the lawnmowers and say right. go ahead you know we still sent one guy with them just to make sure that everything was good now realistically if we have the same people back this year this mm -hmm. coming year then the keys may get handed over. But at that point in time, I mean, granted, everybody was 18 because I made sure that right. we were not going to bring anybody in under 18. And obviously, anybody that we did bring in, we looked at their driver's record, the whole nine yards before we even uh, brought them on. So, how much does it cost a day, Kevin, if you know, to rent one of these machines? Um, rough numbers. I do have some numbers, Kevin, if it'll help you. Sure. I, I call the local company okay. in yep. that because I. I'm just checking to see, sure. trying to figure out what would be the most cost-effective way of doing this, because I'm, I'm, if my memory serves me, in in like any job, any company, if you need equipment, obviously you got to have the equipment to do the work, and that. But I also remember that last count, I think the highway department was up to like 28 pieces of larger equipment, pickup trucks and graders and bulldozers and I mean uh, bucket loaders and backhoes and so on and so forth. And adding to that list means another storage issue and another maintenance issue in that. So, and uh, like I said, a little concern as far as how we can do this and be as cost effective. And that's why I was kind of asking about, you know, roughly you know, how many man hours do you think we really need on the machine? How often we'd be able to use it? Mm -hmm. Because I did check with one local company and uh, the smaller cap, the 305, for a day rental, it's like 500 bucks. For a week rental, it's about uh, a little over 1,300. And for a month, it's just over $4,000 for a month. That's 28 days, 40 hours a week. Mm -hmm. uh, with the with the 305, usually they they have I shouldn't say usually they have two on hand. Mm -hmm. This is just one company I yep. checked with, and uh, Greenfield and one's readily available all the time. Then they had a 307, not a 308, but mm -hmm. 307, and that ran a little over 600 a day, uh, about 1,900 a week. In about five thousand a month. And what did that come with for attachments? And pardon? what did that come with it for attachments? That came standard standard bucket. They Just have they have other attachments available right. for a small upcharge. Right. Yeah. Well, that because I know because right. I've rented one. Right. Because we so. needed it, and I looked at it, and I said the backhoe is not going to work, so we went out and we rented right. one. Yeah. But so we, we did it, end up, uh, like right. you said, up up charging or up fitting because we had. Uh, um, right, a breaker that we ended up putting right. on there. They do have attachments yep. available, and, and right. they are for a small upcharge. So, uh, so I understand where you're coming mm -hmm. from, and I appreciate that. How much is that for, Jeff? I'm sorry. Pardon? A week? Have you got the smaller one? How much would it be? The, the smaller, smaller one. The smaller one for 15. a week was uh, thirteen hundred. Thirteen, mm -hmm. a little over thirteen. Thank you. For the month, it was a little over four. The larger one was uh, about 1,900 a week, and for the month it was about 5,000. So uh, I'm just looking, trying to figure out, you know, how often would we need this on an annual basis, 
And once again, I also know uh, excavating contractors, and as they've told me, every single one of them rents equipment at some point mm -hmm. in time because they just can't afford to sure. uh, right. own each piece, mm -hmm. store it, and maintain it too. Yep. Uh, they say a lot of times it's a lot easier just to rent it. Sure. Obviously, they have a customer they can pass that on to, right. the town we're in. So, right. But again, just kind of trying to think of mm -hmm. what would be most cost effective. Another thought I had too, and I wish Carolyn was here tonight, uh, was it seems like this mini excavator came about a couple of years ago, same same time that the Mosquito District mm -hmm. came about. Right. And obviously you're going to be put in a situation, it depends on what EPA will allow, right. uh, as far as these trenches and so on and so forth, what you can actually get into and what you can't. Uh, you, mean, you mean in terms of creating a, creating a trench? Edges. No, no as far as cleaning, re so restoring, so restoring, so right. restoring. You know, some the people think this is so right. some people think this is going to be a piece of cake mm. and be able to do it. Well, I think there's some restrictions. Well, so you involved. clean the ditches out so you have a better right. flow. The exactly. water disperses better. Right, Correct. exactly. Of course, we'd have to go all the way down to the ocean from South Deerfield here <laughs> to make that flow happen. But no, it's just Hatfield. Right, but that's you another. Just needed thing. to. Just right. Just right. But but anyways. My thought, and I don't know if you've had the opportunity to maybe discuss this with Carolyn mm -hmm. and see if we could get some type of grant money from the Through Mosquito the District. District. Wasn't about there that. some chance of an operator too that would be coming along with it, but then we would be able to they were, make more? They were going to, about that. they hired a supervisor. Right. Yeah, so. Right. But that's but, all I know of. Right. No, but, you, you mean like. So well, it would just it would just maximize the mini excavator in terms of usage. Like I guess my point is, if you know if you rented it for a month, well that's one thing. But if you had it for more than a month, would you be using it for you know? Right, right. And that that a lot of that count, as you just said, um, is well, I, I think tied that's a good to a, point an operator. You're, so if somebody you're getting at that if they had a mini excavator, they if they had one, you'd probably use it more than. If you had to rent it. If you had a, you would have to rent it. You you use it for the month, you'd if use you it a lot, manpower, you know, and which, you try to save everything right. that, for that time. Um, but if there was some, it, it seems to me it's an operator that's the, uh, that an issue. I don't know. I kind of just remember this also from last year, that that was some of the maximizing your, your people. Um, well, that's, that's another thing. It, it comes down to if, you know, how are we going to, add this to your plate mm -hmm. that you already have, you know, you're in your crew. You know, all of a sudden now we're looking at all these additional items and we're going to add that on top of, on top of your plate. I, I know quite a, some of this on the larger projects, mm -hmm. we always outsource, you know, all right. we, we subcontract it. Right. So, uh, and a lot of times I know in the past that COCOT have been doing a lot of work for the town. Correct. Uh, so it's just a matter of I, you know, I can see time mm -hmm. allotment for some of the smaller projects. Some of the larger projects, though, we're not going to be able to do anyways. I don't believe that's correct. Just yeah, because the big of the win, time, because we don't have it. Right. It'd be right. more like a repair here or cleaning mm -hmm. of, like you say, on the side of roads and so on and so right. forth. So I just don't know if that, if that will be cost effective enough. Mm -hmm or not for me and i'm only one person that's just i'm just throwing no, this out to, to discuss so it's it's something to think about that's mm -hmm. all i would if you if uh we will check with carolyn when when we can mm -hmm. as far as and see if there's any possibility of something maybe from the mosquito district as far as grant money so i don't know if financial or human to, to do that. They've been looking hopefully to the towns to have some resources. That's my, been my understanding. So, less things to change. Can I just, can I make just a 
Unfortunately, yeah. Can I, can I just say something about the budget and the staffing, what you were talking about? Sure. Um, I think to Rachel's point, one of the things that we are talking about is add, or, or not, we've been discussing in terms of all of the projects, as you alluded to, um, that need some kind of public work support that you know, staffing is something that we're going to have to look at at some point. So I guess just in terms of not making this sort of a circular, you know, if we had staff, we'd buy this. If we had this, we'd have staff. If we had this, we'd, you know, that's what I think Kevin's trying to do is take an approach that exactly that. If you have a piece of equipment sitting here, he's going to try to utilize as much as possible with the current staff. But the idea is that we are trying to build capacity in the department in terms of staffing. I'm not sure exactly what that's going to look like, but we have a lot of additional um, work yeah. that well, you know, that, is being you know, considered. We, <laughs> right, we, we appreciate that, but obviously this committee has no say as far as the yeah, staffing. No, no, I know. Have. I just wanted so to that mention does match that. Up right. with the, with yeah, the that's equipment. all I just wanted to mention. Right. That, that's something that's already also, I think, being you know, discussed. I, I would just think that it might be helpful if we could get a, a guesstimate on the amount of time it might be mm -hmm. used sure. in a year. Mm -hmm. I think that would give a, a gauge as to whether a $10,000 investment in, in two months rental mm -hmm. over the course of the year is more practical than $140,000 or $114,000 at this stage of the game, depending on the budgetary needs this year. Right. But, so, but again, that means you're adding whatever that cost is to your budget request, right. in essence. So it's kind of a right, catch-22. Right. And, and just 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 a, a quick number to throw out. Let's just say hypothetically you went with a hundred and fourteen thousand dollar one, and we're going on the theory that we're going to last twenty five years for replacement. It's forty five hundred dollars a year. Yeah. So, so we, I'm, I'm yeah. looking I'm looking at the long run. Mm -hmm. So let's just say arbitrarily we, we don't go with the mini and we end up renting it for a month or two months every year. Yeah. Um. By the time we're at our twenty five years. We could have purchased this mm -hmm. two and a half times right. and gotten more use out of it. Yeah, because well, possibly, you think about but it, you also don't have the work. storage and you don't have yeah. the maintenance of them too. Insurance, and right, mm -hmm. and you and you may use that back home more. So, right. so it's blank, blanket coverage for our insurance. So sure for cut for equipment for collision for damage. No, we have a blanket, you know, policy. Right. For damage, you have the liability, maybe, but what about Nothing damages damage. to equipment or to equipment itself? Mm -hmm. You mean if somebody were to, like, if it's well, somebody, hit it? somebody rolled it over, somebody crashed it, somebody, somebody rolled it over, rolled it over, yeah, put it in the river, yeah. or something. Over and bank. It'd be the same thing as, like, yeah. our pickup trucks and our, yeah. we right, any other. Is that blank? That's not blanket, is it? Well, I don't think it would, it wouldn't add a lot to, sure. to add that piece of equipment to it. I mean, it's, it wouldn't be a substantial amount of money in a premium each year. It is a blanket. It's a total blanket policy. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Any other questions or comments? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I, I guess my question has to do with which machine, which machine is more appropriate? And I guess my comment, and maybe you could dissuade me from this, but it looked to me like the, the more expensive machine was a lot bigger, like a, like a very large piece of equipment. And I'm saying this, I don't know anything, I'm just looking in the brochure. It, it, is, it, is, it is larger. And it seems like it, it's maybe, it's like, to me, my first impression was that it was like overkill for what we, we're going to use it for. Mm -hmm. For example, you, you, know, you, you talk about that the the mini is 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 more maneuverable. It takes up less space on the road than the uh, mm -hmm. than the backhoe. Right. But the but the big machine looks like it's 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 it, really not that much bigger. But but I, I understand exactly where you're coming from. Okay, because it is a larger machine. You well, know? and it's like twice as much money. And and so. part of the reason why we're looking at the larger machine is going on the thought process. If it does replace the backhoe, then it will be able to do the things that the backhoe presently does. Like if we're doing uh, catch basins, okay? Because right now we're not building catch basins anymore. It's not cost effective by any means. Um, you purchase uh, prefab units and drop them into place. And again, right now, right right now we're utilizing the backhoe. 
if we went with the 305, I really don't think the 305 is going to be able to pick up a lot of those. I think we're going to have issues with that. But, but you granted, could use, granted, but then you could use the back. We could, well, could use the that, back. We could use the back at that point in time. We could also utilize our our loader too if we needed to, because we do have a stick that goes along with the loader. So it's not just a bucket. We've actually got an attachment that's a. It's like an extension arm, basically what it is. So you could utilize that too. I mean, but that is again is still is is you just got to be careful on, on what you're doing and how you're doing it. The simple fact is you're dropping a piece of um, a prefab in, in place. It has to be where it needs to be. It can't be off by six or eight inches. For the simple fact that pipes don't line up. And blah blah blah. So. Okay. Any other questions, concerns? So, so your your vote is for the larger machine. I would make a case to go with for the larger them. machine. To be honest with you, yes. And again, with that thought process, is because when the backhoe is due for replacement, then that would not need to be replaced. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember the name. I can't remember the number of the piece of equipment. And are you Don't only you. considering a caterpillar? This is this is just budgetary right now. I mean, because basically what we do is we end up going out and we look. Um, we did look at the, um, we're, we're watching what the water department was doing, you know, and they, they tried out a, a few different ones. The Caterpillar seemed to be the best unit working wise. Uh, it seemed to be the best, best movability wise. It seems that our prices, our, our parts, our availability are definitely much better than, because, you know, Caterpillar, you can go right down to, we pick up the phone and there's, there's a drop spot in Springfield, you just go right down there and pick them up with the drop spot. Um, and historically, you call that day, your parts are there the next day. You know, you get into some of the other ones, the Volvos and stuff like that, it takes quite a while before you start seeing parts. So we're looking at, we're trying to look at the whole big picture. But again, you know, you would, you would at that point in time, if this was to be authorized, then we would go ahead and do our due diligence and move on and, and look to see what else is out there that's available. Because you know, could very well find something that's cheaper to do. So. The water department has nothing. The many nothing no. now. No. Okay. All right. Uh, one other quick thing, mm -hmm. Kevin, and I know you have mentioned it, and Chuck had mentioned it. You brought up uh, last year, and it came up again in our joint meeting. In that, as far as uh, your department and other departments, as far as. Uh, 115,000 yep. on an annual basis. Yep. That's all you would need to maintain and do the capital. The only trouble is, Kevin, we cannot do that. Okay. And the reason why it can't be done is, and I, I was a little surprised that didn't come up, and maybe I should have brought it up at, at our last joint meeting, but uh, the uh, CIPC uh, bylaw doesn't allow it. It's simply that's it's the the bylaw is anything over ten thousand right. dollars asset has to come to this committee. Well, it would and, still be coming to the committee, right? And obviously, obviously the the uh, you know they there's done for a purpose as far mm -hmm. as because we can't just simply earmark a hundred and fifteen thousand for capital for the highway department and fifty thousand for the police. That's why. With the bylaw, mm -hmm. all those requests have to come sure. to well, to this committee. Sure. Now, at the same time, if you're on 115,000 every year, you have to bring the request forward. Right. But I just want to make it clear that it's something that we're not able. This committee's not able to do. Sure. Because no, of the bylaw. No, just so that way, so that way, everybody's clear. I wasn't asking for 115,000 right. dollars a year. I was asking for 115,000 dollars a year to go in a savings account. Right. And that way, so hear me out. So now, for the next until 2039 is how far out we went out with our capital. Right. We yep. didn't do just the five years. We went all the way out to 2039. Mm -hmm. So another 39 years from now, $115,000 a year, roughly, right. would cover any expenses of any of the equipment to be replaced between now and then. So now going on that theory. Um, well, that's okay. I, so, I, so, but he, hear me out. So, so 2009, we asked for 280,000. 
on 2000, I'm sorry, uh, 2000, yeah, sorry. 19. 19. There we go. 19. 1,839,000. 2020, um, again, depending on if you were with or without the mini excavator, um, 105 or 115. 2021, 30,000. The following year after that, 210,000. Then there's nothing for 2023, 230,000 for 24, 155,000 for 25, 40,000 for 26. Right, you're just simply doing a cost average. So, so basically what we did is we just showed going right. all the way across, these are what they are. Right. And then if you took 115,000 and you put it in the bank right. as capital, not, not specifically saying, I just take the money and buy whatever I want. Right. I'm just trying to do this for planning purposes because part of the meeting, when, when, we're, when we're at the meeting, you were talking, you were saying, well, there's no way of being able to, to distinguish how much money we need from year to year to year. Well. I'm giving you 39 years worth of. Right. This is, no, I, this is, I, this is what we what we would need to do if that's the direction you want to go. Yeah. But I, I want to make sure that what you're saying. Yeah. I didn't you're want anyone to think that you're doing a cost average. Exactly. Now. Right. You know, we're we're just right. trying to say, okay, well, you know what? If you give right. us this for if, right. not give us, but if you take one hundred fifteen thousand dollars a year and put it into capital, no. that's right. And, and if you earmark it for and and not have it be taken to replace a roof or do this or do that or do whatever. If you had that hundred fifteen thousand right. dollars here, right there, well, that's never my, go back. That's my point. We can't earmark but, but, it. But, according to according to the bylaw, that does not allow us to do that. And it right. was our forefathers obviously did this intentionally, as far as a check and balance sure. for the voters. Right. And that's why it has to come to the which annual town be. meeting. Right. Which it still so, will be. So being able to just take the money and put it in a bank. Well, isn't that what you're doing right now with the capital improvement plan? And that. But that's not earmarked for anybody. That's not earmarked for a specific. We're building a stabilization fund, right. which is different. But at the same time, down the road, well, that's your that's department and any other department could have availability to those funds. Right. That's all. Right. But what, but, I, what I was just trying to get at is, right. is if, if you were to take $115,000 yeah, a year and put it in this arbitrary wherever, right. and that money was somewhat available, Right. then that is where I'm trying to come with this would give you a a 39 year outlook on how much money right. capital wise yeah the highway department would be looking for right no I, I understand so I that, think that, that all, was yeah. the major part we were but trying it's just, to cross. right it's a cost averaging and it's good right. and it's great that you did that it's just that the bylaws do not allow us to earmark money into sure. a fund for a specific department, that's all. But I just wanted to make sure Everybody that isn't necessarily in favor of a stabilization fund like that. Right. So, hmm. I mean, that's a whole other discussion. Right, that's that's a whole It kind of goes beyond the scope of the CIPC. Right. So, so, like I said, okay. I just want to make sure that you guys were aware of what, what the options were. That's yeah. all. Okay. Kevin, thank you very yeah. much. Thank Anybody have any questions or comments? No. Thank yeah, you I'll very much for coming. back on the yeah. hours. Of use. Okay. 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 Yeah, yeah that would be that would be great. Any other? That would be the biggest thing. Looking for? Talk <laughs> Carolyn into the Mosquito District coming up with grant money for you for that many. <laughs> that would be the second thing. <clears throat> well, actually, we're working thing. on. <laughs> so, okay. Well, thank you very right. much, Kevin. Appreciate you give, appreciate you it. As far as there is a meeting following. <laughs> behind us here yeah, as yeah, far as the finance. finance committee so very quickly here <clears throat> set a date and we're going to try to avoid Tuesdays because the finance committee is going to be meeting on Tuesdays so set a date for next week can people do next week? No. Wednesday or Thursday? I'm good either day. Wednesday? Um, Wednesday is better because SCEMS is scheduled for Thursday. Skip has, has a question. <clears throat> I don't, unless the meetings, your meetings and finance committee meetings are fairly long. Uh, I don't think it's a problem having him back to back. Maybe we should say, you know, 
half an hour between the two of them, but I don't have a problem if you guys meet on Tuesday. I thought Allison couldn't meet on Tuesday. Tuesday. Uh, Allison, you can't meet on Tuesday? That is correct. Okay. This is the so one exception. if we have Wednesdays or Thursday CIPC so that you could do finance afterwards or on Thursdays or whatever. Can you do finance on Wednesday? Well, uh, we can do finance three Tuesdays out of the month. And I think that's what we discussed as far as finance committee. There's one Tuesday each month that you can't do, Allison, is that it? Um, this is the only Tuesday for budget season I can attend. Uh, so Tuesday is the one day of the week that will absolutely not work for me. Wednesdays? Wednesday at 5. Wednesday at 5. Like Wednesday at 5, the 15th. Yep. Yeah. I apologize for running behind. Jack is be able to do my meetings today. Nice. Agenda for that? Yeah. It's got to be a record. For Wednesday. Now, the next question, very quickly. Uh, what do is we want to see if we can get Trevor in the ad hoc committee lined up? Diana, is that something that you can? She just left, I think. Is that all we have left for? Uh, right. Well, no, we have we have Trevor in the ad hoc oh, no, committee right for there. the town common. Okay. But didn't we kind of didn't we already we already had Trevor? Yeah. We, well, I think the ad hoc. Committee oh, the wants ad hoc to committee in. wants to. Right. Let's come in address. I think that's a different committee, isn't it? Yeah. Next Wednesday. Someone, from, yes, someone, someone definitely. Somebody from the ad hoc committee and Trevor? Yeah, you tell us what night. We'll make sure. It's For 5 o'clock next Wednesday? 5 o'clock next Wednesday, which is the 15th. 15th. Okay. I'll, I'll put it out to the committee. And okay. Well, we have these other requests from the select board, the feasibility study for the town facilities, 50000 you might, Diana, the recreation you might want to talk about the little grant that you were thinking about, too. A million dollars. To how that will dovetail into yeah, some of this stuff. Yeah, we did the stuff. schools. We didn't do well. well <coughs> and then we have culvert training. replacement program. And, Kevin, can you do me a favor? Sure. On the five-year plan, I know you have mm -hmm. a request in with the school. Mm -hmm. And uh, the entryway was, was one item, but hardware, uh, I mean, uh, restroom renovations and replacing uh -huh. flooring. But also on the five-year plan, but we didn't get anything for a request, a written request. On the five-year plan, there was uh, ceiling tiles in there and also uh, door hardware. Yeah, I think the door hardware. And I think that might be done because that was just a projection. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page and we're not missing anything. Right. I think so we're pretty could, well along on the door hardware, but I will double check. Right. I just I just want to make sure that we're not missing anything. If it's you know the request is not not needed, then fine. If it's for down the road, you can have problem. Yeah. If that will help. Sure. So, and maybe you can just update us next week. Sure. That. Appreciate mm -hmm. that. We need to discuss the generator, though. Right. We still need to discuss that, and we can do that next Wednesday night also. Okay. With the town ad hoc committee. Right. And is there anything else you want to put on your plate? Well, Diane. While well, Diane is here, you, did you get a chance to do the study to see if? What we need for our emergency shelter, whether we have enough with the in relationship to have a generator the now. Deerfield Elementary School generator. Well, I mean, what do you think as far as, Carolyn, we're using the, we have a regional shelter agreement and we're using this building and the idea is we need additional sheltering. And well, I, I mean, I look at the generator as more important um, for the elementary schools so that 
you know, we don't lose food in the refrigerators and the freezers. That's the other thing. I mean, why don't we, we, why don't we discuss that next week then? So uh, we can get into a further okay. discussion yeah. because of my time I, I, on, here. Uh, quite honestly, I try not. I, I would not want to open up a shelter in Deerfield. That's why we participate okay. in the in, right. in the we can, regional we can shelter discuss program that one, so. because we are we have no we are really have no right. I mean our capacity is very limited because of the because of the time timeline here. Right. But uh, we use it for a warming bucks, center and a. But again, the, I just I just want to emphasize the school committee has submitted the generator just for this very discussion. It's not right. plumbing free. And you know, we're, we're perfectly willing to go along with how the town decides, but it's just that that's a pretty valuable building and it's never really had the emergency protection if we ever had an extended power outage. So. Well, we've lost food before. Right, but I mean, the cost of the food that you lose would probably last, the, you could, Pay that Replace amount of money it, over several uh, events yeah. before you hit sixty-eight, seventy thousand dollars. Do you want to try so. to take on uh, the rec very... committee as far as Hi, the request for, for ball fields and so on well, and so it's forth? It's the amount. Of yeah, about sure. one sure. million. Oh, okay. Could you sign Sue up for next week? For next week, yep. also. Yeah. Thank you, Diana. Maybe, maybe. So we'll have we'll have the rec committee. We'll have the town common ad hoc committee, and Ken can fill us in with some information from the school. Mm -hmm. All right? I guess the frozen pipes would be so, a huge thing, Ken. So I'll make a motion to adjourn. Right. No, I will. Thank you. <laughs> yes. I'll second. Oh. All right. Any other discussion? <laughs> no. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.